Welcome to the 3D Animation Hub, my name is Brian and today we're going to be talking about Moolah. In this video we're going to talk about the different kind of incomes you can have, then I'll share with you my 7 streams of income. And I'll also explain why you should have different streams of income and not just one. This applies to everyone of course, but I feel like it's even more important as artists and as animators. Now if that intro tickles your fancy, smash that like button and let's hop in. Just really quick before we actually hop in, if you haven't heard, we recently launched 2anime.ca. This is our website for the extensive Blender animation course that's in the making. If you're interested on in keeping up with monthly newsletters, with visual graphics showing you all the stuff that was done in the course in that month, as well as a monthly tip infographic, the first one went out today, but if you subscribe today or tomorrow, I'll probably resend it to the new people. If that interests you, make sure to go to 2anime.ca and subscribe there to the newsletter. With that, let's get back to the video. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that we talk a lot about how the animation industry is volatile, especially compared to some of the other jobs, some of the more 9 to 5 jobs. And if you're not financially ready for an emergency or have a nest egg to take care of yourself and your family in case of layoffs, in case of your studio running out of business and shutting down, you're gonna have a bad time. I've had many friends go through the scares of being laid off on a short notice because the company was cleaning house, they ran out of clients or they were shutting down and then out of nowhere they're like, oh by the way, you might be out of a job next week and everybody's freaking out. So I just want to let you know that this happens and you need to be prepared for it because it does happen and it will happen to you most likely in your career. Which is the whole reason I'm doing this whole financial thing. The whole reason I'm adding financial education to this channel is to prepare you in the hopes to get you to start thinking about your finances before something happens and be preemptive about it and not be reactive to it. So if God forbid something happens, you're prepared for it. So in my pursuit of financial freedom, I've discovered that the average millionaire, uh, someone who is financially independent, has more than seven streams of income. So they're not reliant on just one salary, so if they lose one source of income, they have six others. <laughs> I can't. They have six other sources of income to kind of off balance it. So losing that one source of income doesn't have as big of an impact on them because they have six other sources coming in, six other streams of income coming in for them. Now there is a list of different types of income you can have. I'm gonna go through this and explain them just a little bit for you guys, just so you have an overall understanding. And then once I do that, I'll talk about my situation and my different streams of income that I've managed to create over the last few years. So without further ado, first one is earned income. Now this is just your day-to-day -day job. This is your salary. This is the primary source of your income coming in. It's your full-time job. And so you go into work, you working as an animator, that's your earned income. The second source of income could be business income. This is uh, if your side hustle is a business if you're buying or selling things um, selling things online or providing some sort of service this could be your business income so you could have a full-time job and you could have a side hustle that's a business of your own that you're building and that could be your uh, second stream of income the third type of income is interest so you could be earning interest through peer-to-peer -peer lending you could be a hard money lender you could be lending to uh, to friends or through some sort of institution to other people peer-to-peer uh, -peer, and then gain some interest on it. So you could be like, hey, I'll give you this $10,000. You can use it since you need it so bad, but I'm going to need 10700 back by the end of the year. So you lend the money to them for a year at a 7% interest and they have to bring it back to you with a 7% interest after a year. So you made 700 bucks on your money and you didn't really do anything. It was going to sit around your bank account anyway. So that's another way to create another stream of income. The fourth type of income could be dividend income. So this is something that you get when you own a stock in a company. Now, not all companies give you dividend, but there are uh, dividend specific companies. Um, I think Coca-Cola has dividend. Um, almost every single bank stock has dividend. So for example, RBC. RBC right now, as the making of this video, has a 3.5% dividend rate. So this means if you put $10,000 into the RBC stock and not their savings account, not their checking, in their stock, not only do you get the benefit of the stock going up over time slightly, but uh, they also have a 3.5% dividend rate. So if you put $10,000 in there, at the end of the year, they'll be paying you $350. So that's 3%, 3.5% of $10,000. 
So 350 a year comes out to about uh, $30 a month. So if you had $10,000 in an RBC stock, not only is it safe, not only is it gradually going up over time, uh, you're also gaining $30 a month on top of that, just being sent to you. And that could cover a couple of your subscriptions, your Netflix subscription and other ones. And that's at no extra cost to you. It's just money being added on top of your money. It has nothing to do with your initial uh, investment. That's just, you're just keeping your money there, getting the benefits of being paid dividend to even owning a stock. So that's that. Number five is rental income. So this is, um, for this you'd obviously have to have a lot more money uh, up front. You'd have to purchase a property, a rental property, or you could rent out a room in your house if you already have a place you live and create a uh, rental income through that room being rented or rent out your basement. So if you already have a house, the basement is empty, you can make it or you can, and then you can rent it, rent out a room or buy an entirely new house just for, just to uh, get rental income. Again, this is easier said than done, but uh, it is something you can look into as a source of income. Now the sixth one would be capital gain. A couple of ways you can earn capital gain. One is through assets and stocks. And I guess if you look at a house as an asset, then um, the appreciation of the house's price can count as capital gain. So if you bought a house for $400,000 two, uh, two, three years ago, it'd probably be worth 700,000 or 800,000 right now where I live. <laughs> Lucky bastards. Uh, so you would have gained uh, three to $400,000 in capital gains. Um, the same is true with stocks. If you bought some stocks for like $10,000, and they're worth like $40,000 now, that's $30,000 in capital gains. So you technically, if you sell, you've made that money in capital gains. And last but not least is, eh, probably at least <laughs> royalties and uh, licensing. So this is something you can do if you created a work, if you have an IP to something, um, even stock photos as an example. If, you, if you've if like uploaded like hundreds and hundreds of stock photos, you get a little bit of commission every time someone actually uses that photo or use that video. This could be true with anything. If you're making animations, you can make an animation pack and then, I don't know, have that animation pack on the side and every time someone buys it, you get a commission, you get a fee, royalty fee. Now, most of you watching this video right now most likely have just the uh, earned income, which is your full-time job and it's just your one source of income and that's okay, that's, that's why I'm making this video. I want you to, with everything we just mentioned, all the different incomes we mentioned, you can go back, you can rewatch, um, but I want you to spend, maybe now, but um, try and spend 10 to 15 minutes a day, if you'd like you can do it now, 10 to 15 minutes a day just using your brain juices to try and come up with another source, another stream of income that you can create. It doesn't have to be big, but once you create it, then you can grow it. So the first step is actually just creating it and then you can focus on growing it. And if you do come up with anything, make sure to drop a comment down below. Maybe you'll help some of the other people out if you don't mind sharing. Now, in my case, I managed to get together around seven streams of income coming my way. Um, some are small, some are decent, and some may seem insignificant, but that doesn't matter because the fact that it's there, the fact that it's begun is a huge deal because now I can focus on growing it. And so to give you guys some visuals, obviously my main source of income is my earned income. This is my full-time job. Now I was advised by my lawyers, girlfriend, to not share the exact numbers. So let's just say this is more than 3K and less than 6K, just, just to give some perspective for all the other numbers. So my earned income, that's my biggest source of income. And my second biggest source of income is my stocks and investments. This accounts to about 38% of my total earnings. Now this isn't money I sell. This is money invested in growing and appreciating companies with good leadership and five to 10 year plans of action. And so what I did was I averaged out the last six months and of investments and it came up to this number. So out of my monthly income, 38% of it is from my assets and my investments appreciating. And so moving on to the third, affiliate links. So this includes Amazon links or any other sort of affiliate links that I share. Now I've decided not to endorse a lot of the links that I'm sent and a lot of the emails that I get because I, I know how easily this stuff can get out of hand and I don't wanna be responsible for anyone's misfortune. So I've just decided to endorse only things I own and I have a really good connection with. So for example, Rococo. 
I've, I've talked with the CEO, I've talked with a lot of the people that work there and they seem like amazing people. They sent me the product themselves and um, I tried it out and I loved it. And then I was like, okay, let's make some videos. So things like that, I, I did try not to go out of my way and just randomly endorse something. So for that reason, that number is a little bit on the low side, in my opinion, compared to some of the other YouTubers, but it's a number nonetheless, it's a source number less. And so moving on to my fourth stream of income, we're looking at YouTube. That's right, YouTube ad money. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how people make like hundreds and like thousands of dollars a day on YouTube, but uh, it ain't this channel. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, it, it accounts to about a, less than a percent of my monthly income, but um, it has opened up the way for all these other sources of revenue. Uh, my income from affiliate wouldn't be possible without YouTube and some of the other ones we're gonna mention. So it kinda, it's kind of like a, a gateway. Now it doesn't provide as much money itself, but like all the side things kind of add up a little bit. So talking about pathways that YouTube opened, Gumroad is one. So on Gumroad, I share some of the more premium lessons, um, some stuff to add to the lessons I share on YouTube, like PDFs and stuff like that. And uh, you're usually at a pretty low price. It's like free to like $3. And I have one thing that's like 10 to $12, which I spent a lot of time on. But usually people are generous enough to like donate a little bit as well. So this kind of adds up. And yeah, Gumroad accounts to about 0.4% of my monthly income. It's nice, it, it helps for, so that 0.4% actually helps pay off um, some subscriptions I could have, like Netflix and whatnot. So it's, it's not nothing. And yeah, my sixth source of income, sixth source of income is Patreon. Now, I haven't put really too much emphasis on my Patreons, on my Patreon page for a long time. Uh, I kind of started it, I was hyped about it, but then I got very, very busy. And so I haven't had time to grow this, but I had, I've had a couple of very, very supportive Patreons for, Patreons for a very long time now. And so that, makes about as much as Gumroad for me. So it's about another like 0.4% of my monthly income comes from Patreon. And yeah, I would like to, in the future, I would like to spend a little bit more time on this, um, grow this a little bit more. But as of now, 0.4% of my monthly income comes from Patreon. Now, last but not least, now it's, it's least. <laughs> it's a dividend income. This is from, we talked about it a little bit earlier. This is from owning stocks that give you dividend. Now, my dividend is only 0.2% of my income. And there is a reason, there's two reasons for that. Reason one, I don't really invest in dividend stocks. I invest in growth and tech stocks mostly. And so they almost never give any dividend. So for that reason, my dividend income isn't really that high because that's not my focus. But there is some, you know, um, I, I invest in RBC, I invest in TD and they give they give three to 5% dividend yearly. And so the second reason why my dividend account is, my dividends coming in is very, very low is because the dividend stocks I did invest in, <laughs> they stopped giving dividend because of the pandemic. So I'm sure once they recover, they'll restart their dividend program. And uh, I did get in at a pretty snag price. Uh, some of them are like eight to 15% dividend when I hopped in before they canceled it. So hopefully we'll get those same kind of returns once they start back up. But um, as of now, is 0.2% of my monthly revenue. Again, I mentioned some of these are insignificant, but there's a lot of room for growth. Now, my ultimate goal for, for uh, my side hustles, my investments, all this other side streams of income is to eventually overtake my main source of income, my earned income. I'm hoping they will cover about 80% of the overall monthly cost. At that point, I'm thinking of either going part-time or quitting altogether and uh, focusing on my side hustles or focusing on passion projects. That is, that is the goal, passion projects including YouTube. So once I pass that 80% monthly rate um, and my earned income is about 20% of my monthly income, then I'm, I have a lot more leverage, I, can, uh, I have a lot more of my time to myself. So that's the ultimate goal eventually. Now, if you guys are interested talking about boosting my Patreon, 
Uh, if you guys are interested, I can share my current investment portfolio on Patreon publicly. So you don't have to be become a Patreon to uh, to look at it. It'll just be up there for public. It'll be in a link in the description. Now, this isn't investment advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment purposes only if you're just interested. Now, if you did learn something, I would greatly appreciate it if you could just gently smash that like button. Hit the sub button to stay notified of future animation videos. I want to give a huge thank you to my beautiful Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your continuous support of this channel. And with all of that out of the way, happy animating and I will see you guys in the next video.